I've been pretty excited about doing this video for quite a while. These are two of the very best laptops you can buy. We've got the new mid-2017 MacBook Pro 15, along with the Dell XPS 15 9560, both with KB Lake processors and dedicated graphics cards. But how do they stack up next to each other and which is better? Well, first of all, let's put to one side the Mac versus Windows debate for another video, because there's pros and cons for each. You probably already have a preference, or at least you're used to using one over the other. So I want to compare more of the hardware side of things. So with that said, let's take a look at the specs for the models I've got here. And as you can see, they're both running Intel's 7th gen Kaby Lake chips. The MacBook Pro also has an AMD RX 560 graphics card, whereas the XPS 15 comes with Nvidia's GTX 1050. And as for the price, well, this is £1,600. And this is £2,700. That's quite a difference, but I know what you're thinking. This is the cheaper full HD version of the XPS 15, that's true. You do also have the option to get the XPS 15 with a 4K touchscreen, which bumps up the price by 200 to 1800 pounds. But even then, there's still a 900 pound difference here. So there's no getting away from the fact that the MacBook Pro is significantly more expensive, but maybe it's worth it, let's find out. So let's kick off by talking about the design and the build quality. I mean, they're both exceptionally well-made laptops. The MacBook Pro 15 with its all aluminium unibody looks really sleek and premium. It's one of the best looking laptops on the market. The XPS 15 looks pretty good as well. It's got an aluminium chassis as well as soft touch carbon fiber composite palm rests. The MacBook Pro is thinner and a little bit lighter than the XPS 15, but the Dell does have a slightly smaller overall footprint thanks to its tiny bezels, or what Dell calls its Infinity Edge display. Although it does have quite a big bottom bezel here, or chin, uh, which you could call it, which also houses the webcam, which we'll talk more about later on. Now they both also have fingerprint readers, although it is an optional extra on the XPS. But one thing I have always liked about the MacBooks is that you can open it one-handed like this. It's a trivial little thing, but it just kind of speaks of the build quality, the attention to detail. The Dell, on the other hand, doesn't. <laughs> and as well as that, while I do think it is a bit of a gimmick, the touch bar does look quite cool, and I guess it does add some extra functionality to the keyboard. Personally, I think the MacBook Pro comes out on top in terms of overall design and style and premium build quality. I've had a couple of issues with both of them. The Dell, for example, when I first got it, it didn't sit quite flush, quite flat on the desk. It still wobbles a tiny bit. So I actually had to twist the aluminium body a little bit to make it sit flat on the desk. That's not something you should be doing for a 1600 pound laptop. I've also had a slight issue where the uh, bezel, I think they call it screen pinching, the bezel sort of pinches the screen. So I every now and then get dark spots along the left side. And one other thing about the XPS is that the carbon fiber uh, palm rest, which does look nice. It's got quite a nice texture and feel to it. It does sort of discolor a little bit as you use it, the grease of your fingers. I don't have particularly dirty hands, but it just becomes a bit greasy and you get dark patches around it. Not really ideal for a premium laptop. But then again, the MacBook Pro wasn't perfect either. This particular model I have, uh, when I first opened it, the F key didn't work. It was already pressed in. Still sounds a little bit different. So I actually had to um, take out the F key, put it back in, uh, to fix it. So I mean, for design, personally, I think the MacBook Pro comes out on top in terms of overall design and style. But what about the display? Well, the screen is kind of hard to compare, actually. The Dell I have here is a 15.6 inch full HD matte screen, but you also have the option to get it with a glossy 4K touch screen. And that's actually a lot more color accurate, calibrated to support DCI-P3 and Adobe RGB color gamuts. And having used the 4K model, it does look quite a lot nicer. But I went for the full HD one because A, it's a bit cheaper, it offers much better battery life, and personally, I prefer a matte finish to glossy, but that's just my preference. I'm also not that fussed on touchscreens, and I think 4K as well for a 15 inch laptop is a bit overkill. But at least you have the choice, that's pretty good. As for the MacBook Pro, well you only get one option. That's a 15.4 inch glossy retina display. And with a resolution of 2880 by 1800, it sits between the 1080p XPS 15 and the 4K XPS. So the MacBook does have a higher pixel print density, is therefore sharper than this model of the XPS, but the 4K version of the Dell beats the MacBook. But honestly, I don't think resolution means that much. It's not that much of a big deal. 1080p on a 15 inch laptop is perfectly fine. What makes a bigger difference is the brightness, the color accuracy, and whether it's glossy or matte. And in terms of brightness, the MacBook Pro definitely comes out on top. It reaches a maximum of 511 nits versus 300 
and 65 on the Dell. So if you're using it outside, if you're using it in bright sunlight, the MacBook Pro will be a lot easier to use. And it also just makes everything look more vibrant. That as well as the fact that it's got a more color accurate screen than this, and it's also glossy, therefore it looks a bit more punchy. So first is the 1080p XPS, the MacBook Pro wins. But compared to the 4K version of the XPS 15, which is actually even more color accurate, but also does have a super reflective glossy screen and does have a massive impact on battery, I'd call it a tie. Now, before we move on to performance, let's just quickly talk about ports. Apple's decision to ditch pretty much everything else except for USB-C and headphone jack is obviously quite controversial. On this model, you've got four USB-C Thunderbolt 3s along with a single headphone jack. And initially, I did think it was really frustrating. There will always be times where you just want to quickly plug in a mouse or an SD card and then you think, oh yeah, I have to go and get my adapter. But the truth is, once you do get yourself a good USB-C hub or adapter and you make sure you bring it with you, it makes it kind of a non-issue. But what does frustrate me is when you compare it to the XPS 15. There's simply no need, unless Apple's trying to just push the whole industry forward or something, to not be able to include these ports. I mean, the Dell has everything you need. It's got a USB-C Thunderbolt 3 port along with two standard USB 3s, a full-size SD card reader, HDMI out, headphone jack, and Kensington lock port. It may be a tiny bit thicker than the MacBook Pro, but if that's what it takes to have all the ports and the convenience of that on a laptop, you know, I'll gladly take it. So I could get used to the MacBook Pro. It's not a deal breaker, but compared to the XPS 15, which has every port I need, it just seems arrogant and annoying. So that's enough about ports. Let's move on to speed, performance. Which one is faster? Running the Geekbench 4 CPU benchmark, the MacBook and the XPS had almost identical single core scores with only a minus 6% difference in multi-core. So the MacBook Pro just beats it, which is to be expected considering it's got a slightly higher clock speed, but it's basically neck and neck and you won't be able to tell the difference. But just wait until you see the graphics performance difference. Running the Geekbench Compute OpenCL benchmark, the XPS 15 is the clear winner. We're looking at a 56% difference, which is incredible. So then I ran the Cinebench OpenGL graphics test, which is actually a bit more relevant for gaming and 3D rendering performance. And surprisingly, the results were much closer. There was just a 9% difference in frame rate. So some really interesting results there, but it's clear the GTX 1050 in the XPS is just a bit faster across the board. Even though gaming definitely isn't a strong point for the MacBook, I loaded up City Skyline on both laptops and with the same high settings and with the MacBook's resolution as close as possible to 1080p, performance on the Dell was significantly better. The game ran with a much smoother 45 FPS average to the MacBook Pro's 32. Of course that is just one game, but considering how relatively limited the selection of games on the MacBook is, if gaming is important to you, definitely go with the Dell. If you're a keen video editor like I am, then you'll be interested to know that both laptops can comfortably edit 4K 60 video in Premiere Pro. From my experience, they feel just as fast as each other, although the Dell can export videos quite a bit faster, but that's largely down to optimizations for Windows. So that is a lot of information to take in, but overall, in terms of performance, I'd say primarily due to the Dell's faster GTX 1050, which comes standard in all but one of the XPS models, unlike the MacBook where the RX 560 in here is the top of the line option. For performance, I reckon the XPS wins. Now a quick word on fan noise and heat. You'll be pleased to hear that actually neither get particularly hot. The XPS's metal body never exceeded 42 degrees on my testing, only a couple degrees higher than the MacBook Pro, so you don't have to worry about either of them burning your legs off. Fan noise can get quite loud on both, but only when you're doing demanding tasks. Generally, uh, when you're just sort of browsing the web or watching videos, they're both pretty much silent. Now in terms of battery life, Apple claim you'll get 10 hours from the MacBook Pro, whereas Dell claim on this model of the Full HD XPS 15 with a bigger battery, you're looking to get a whopping 19 and a half hours. Now I can tell you right now that whatever lab test that figure came from, it's not true in the real world. And actually, I found them both to be pretty similar in terms of battery life, despite Dell's wild claims. One hour of Netflix with 50% brightness used 9% of the Dell's battery and 7% of the MacBooks. I also played City Skyline on them for an hour each, which of course drained the battery considerably since it was using the graphics cards. One hour of gaming used 45% of the Dell's battery and 55% of the MacBooks. Honestly though, there's not much difference. And while it does depend, of course, on what you're doing, 
you can expect to get around eight hours from both of them, which is actually more impressive for the MacBook since it has a higher resolution screen. And having used the 4K version of the XPS in the past, I found that that on average would only get me about five, five and a half hours. In lab conditions, maybe the Dells last longer, but in real life, especially versus the 4K XPS 15, the MacBook Pro just takes the win. Moving on to keyboards and trackpads. Between the two of these, the first thing you'll notice is just how ridiculously big the MacBook Pro's touchpad is, especially compared to the Dell's, which is about half the size maybe. It's uh, quite a big difference. And while the trackpads on both laptops are really smooth and responsive, the Dell's being Microsoft Precision Certified, for me, the MacBook Pro still has the best trackpad of any laptop on the market. And its bigger size just makes it even nicer to use, especially with Mac OS's great gesture support. As for keyboards, well, I don't really love either of them, to be honest. It's very much a personal preference whether you prefer the more shallow, clacky MacBook keys with its second generation butterfly mechanism or the more traditional spongy feel of the XPS's keyboard. Initially, I really didn't like the MacBook's keyboard, but using it, I have got used to it, and I actually quite like it now. So while the MacBook Pro definitely has the best trackpad, as for keyboards, I'd say it's a tie. It's really personal preference. In terms of speaker quality, they're both above average, I'd say, but the MacBook Pro does produce slightly richer and overall better sound than the Dell. And finally, the webcam, which on the Dell XPS 15 here is, in a word, awful. Not only is the quality appalling compared to the FaceTime camera on the MacBook Pro, but its placement just means you're looking up your nose the whole time. If you're going to FaceTime or video chat people regularly, then the MacBook Pro is a much better option. So I think I've gone on for far too long now about these laptops, but hopefully along the way you found out which one you prefer and if you're in the market for them, which one you might buy. Personally, between these two, I reckon I'm going to stick with the Dell XPS 15. Each have their pros and cons, but I just can't rationalize paying an extra thousand pounds or whatever it is more for the MacBook Pro, as nice as it is. Although, of course, you do have cheaper options for both laptops. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you make of these in the comments below, which one you prefer. And if you want to find out more, I've put links to these in the description below. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I realize it's been quite a long video. Thanks for sticking with me. Uh, if you did enjoy it, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to click that subscribe button. And I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Jam.